What's going on, everybody? Matt Malatesta here with Bite Media with none other than Coach Greg Cranfill. We are at the St. Pius X Coach's Corner. Coach, another big win. We are even at two and two. The Lamarck Cougars, you know, public school play. I think y'all had to go down there. Just kind of give us give us the four one one of what happened in that ball game. Yeah, I've been really pleased with our coaches and our kids. Um, you know. Going 0 and 2 starting the season, then coming back. Um, this week was a huge week for us, uh, as basically just to prove that we could be uh, consistent in some of the areas that we have, um, you know, been improving on. And I felt like we went out and did that. Obviously, you know, I've told you thousands of times where it's never as good as it seems, never as bad as it seems. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I thought was just out of this world bad uh, after watching the the video i'm you know i'm i'm very happy to to think that there are things that we can fix now don't get me wrong there's some of this stuff right now that that had me wanting to flip this chair over on saturday morning watching that video but uh i've been very pleased with with the with the way our captains and our seniors have have kind of led this team and and, and flipped the script uh back to two and two um you know lamarck like you said is is is, is a well coached football team uh, they've got athletes uh and 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 good good hogs and dogs up front if you will that that you know know how to play football and i was just proud of our guys for battling for four quarters and doing what we needed to be to to, to be successful you know we talked defense we're giving them all the flowers last week let's talk a little offense i mean josh mitchell doing a tremendous job running the ball you've got cameron brown and alex yearwood as your you know Guys stretching the field, Braxton, the quarterback. I mean, we've got to give them a little love. They are starting to kind of get their legs under them. Absolutely. And, you know, and one other to add um, that that we kind of, you know, wholesale, not wholesale, but made a, a, a direct line of this has got to change is putting Easton Dean back in the backfield as well to try to spell Josh, uh, you know, and give him – uh, you know, a, a break when we could. And Easton's done nothing for the last two games but get out there and perform. I think he's averaging like six or seven yards a carry, you know. Um, so the the combination, the one-two punch of Josh and Easton in the back have, have proven to be, you know, help us uh, get out of some binds that we normally couldn't get out of. And, and we felt like Braxton played well. You know, he had 212 yards passing and two touchdowns. Um, there's always room for improvement, but a lot of that comes – uh, we had a couple drops that, you know, a 15 to 25 changes to an 18 or a 19 to 25 real quick and from 212 probably to about 280. So we felt like he played well and managed the game well. Um, there's There are things that that he would tell you, man, I want to do better. And that's that's exciting for us as a coaching staff because we have a bunch of guys that see what their their grades are and go, what do I need to do to improve it? And most of it is going to come down to, uh, remember those thousands of times we told you to do this one thing? Yeah, we're just going to keep telling you until it finally clicks. We always say, you know, in coaching, there, there are single rep guys, there are, there, there are two or three rep guys, there are five rep guys, and then there are a thousand rep guys. And, and some of those guys that you mentioned, we feel like Cam Brown, we feel like we can tell him, hey, Cam, instead of doing this, do this, and if they do that, do that. He His football IQ – out of this world and can do it. And then there are other guys that we go, all right, this is what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Okay. So this is what we're going to, and, and, and that's fine too. That's what makes coaching, uh, you know, as frustrating, but on the other side, uh, so rewarding when you see those guys that it finally clicks and, and you just can't give up on kids. That's what we always say. Uh, you can't give up on them. Just keep, keep putting them in the fire, keep working them Monday through Thursday. And I do mean Thursday. I mean, there's, there are very few walkthroughs around here. We're, we're going to, we're going to practice those four days, you know, and get what we can get uh, and give our kids the best chance. And, and we also look at half times. We look at in between series. Uh, you know, we want to know guys that are a, able to make adjustments and great football teams make adjustments because you can watch a video all you want, hours and hours of video, but you really don't know what they're going to do until Friday night, that first series. And then we've got to be able to say, OK, we were right or nope, we were off and this is what we need to do to fix it. And I think 
Offensively, that has been part of our struggle, but we're moving in the right direction. Defensively, we've been able to adjust and fly very, very quickly. And, and I think that's why we've had the success. Uh, this week, Bishop Dunn's coming into, into our place, and it's it's a very formidable opponent. I mean, they 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 can do things offensively that would, would cause us trouble, um, but I think our guys are, are, are going to be prepared. And, and a matter of fact, I know our guys are going to be prepared and go out and perform again. So excited about this opportunity. Tell me about Sam Williams. It seems like he's kind of that dude in the middle, right? And he's yeah. just – is he kind of the alpha, the voice of that defense? Well, actually, Jake Lozano is our Mike Le linebacker. Yeah. And the combination of what Jake and and Sam do inside are what – you know, that, that two-headed monster inside. Um, both of them, their games are different, but they gel together. And they're able just to make play after play after play. And, and a lot of Sam's plays are because Jake sets him up. And a lot of Jake's plays are because Sam sets him up. And, you know, without one, the other probably doesn't exist, you know, as far as statistically. But they both fly to the ball. They both have matured over last year. And they both want people to coach them. And I think that's the most exciting thing that I would say about both of those guys inside. You know, um, Sam has a motor. Uh, and when he gets there, he's mad when he gets there. And he he's he is a physical tackler. And that's what we we like. Jake is exactly the same way. And and we love his leadership. We love his guidance. Uh, Jake calls the defense. Jake puts us in what we are going to do. Any check that we have. And then you've got 10 other guys plus Jake that are going to fly around and, and, and get to the ball. And that's 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 why we feel happy about the progress that our defense has made so far. You know, you, you keep mentioning Easton Dean. I mean, is this guy, he plays both sides of the ball. He does it really well. Is this guy a college-level type player? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's already he has an offer already at running back. Um, but he, you know, he kind of feels like defense was where he would he would like to play. So we've kind of moved him over to defensive kind of sprinkle. He's a defensive starter that plays on offense. Um, but the thing about it is Easton Dean is, a, is he's a stud. I mean, he, he's got a, already accepted an offer to play baseball at Sam Houston. So, I mean, he, he is a guy that has done what he needed to do in the classroom, in the weight room and on the fields that his options are, are going to be lined out from him. And like I said, um, if he chooses to go play baseball, that'll, that's, that's his choice. If he wanted to go play football, that would be his choice as well. And you're going to see a lot of guys on our team that are exactly the same way. We believe Alex Yearwood is that, is that same type of guy. I mean, Alex is an amazing baseball player and he's a pretty darn good football player as well. Um, so what we try to do is, is we're just going to give these kids opportunities, put it out in front of them and then let them make the decision uh, and, 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 and be happy and support them either way they go. You talked earlier about football IQ. And I mean, I love, and it's really sports IQ, you know, sure. some people just, I don't, can you teach football and sports IQ or is it just kind of a feel? Well, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, the way they were brought up, um, you know, and, and, the, and their parents and what they hear and what they see and, and, and how involved they are. Um, but I mean, I would like to think that we can help improve, but starting at zero with your freshman year, you're probably not going to get there by the time you're a senior in high school. I mean, and don't get me wrong, it will improve, but it may go from zero to 25 where these kids with, with dads that are directly involved and, and parents that are, that are taking them to these, these, these leagues and these trainers um, they come to us uh, and they're ready to go, um, you know, and it, it, it's, it speaks volumes for the amount of work that the parents provide or the, the amount of work that the parents, uh, you know, put their kids out in front. Same thing. They just give their kids opportunities and they all want what's best for their kid. They all want what's great, you know. Um, but when it comes right down to it, it's got to be how bad the kid wants it. Uh, you know, you you can put I can put food in front of my 13 year old son's uh, face every night but he's got to choose whether he eats it, you know, 
Um, it's that old, you can uh, lead a horse to water, but he's got a drink, you know, I can tell you, this is how to do it. This is, this is what's going to make you great. This is what's going to help you, uh, have an edge on somebody. But if you go, you know what, I really like Fortnite just a little bit better than all that stuff that you're talking about. We're going to lose. Um, but I guarantee you, there's probably not much Fortnite going on at, at Cam Brown's house. And there's not much Fortnite going on at, at Easton Dean's house. Um, you know, and, and a lot of those kids that we have up there, um, just because they understand the process and they love it. They, they want to be involved in that and, and instead of just waiting for an outcome. They are what we call active participants in their own rescue when it comes to their athletic career. So, well, but all right, finally, let's talk Bishop Dunn. They kind of, they're not super explosive offensively. It seems like, you know, they have, um, you know, maybe a quarterback that kind of manages the game, but they've been a state power for years. Yeah. What do you, what do you see are the keys to this game? I, I think that they have the potential to be that, that explosive offense that you're talking about. Uh, they played some pretty good, play, uh, pretty good teams last week. They played a pretty average team and scored seventy-two points on them. Mm. So uh, they have the ability to score and score from everywhere. And defensively, they are chaotic. They fly around. They're going to be, you know, they're going to bring bring the house, so to speak. So it's it's a matter of us weathering an early storm and understanding that this game is about the alpha and who is, who's going to prove that they're the alpha on all these one-on-one matchups and go out there and do their job. Um, they're well coached, but you know what, those guys in that locker room there, they're pretty well coached too. So uh, we're going to take the fight to them and, and, and see, see how, see how it all works out. All right. Well, Hey, stay tuned this weekend. This is our countdown to kickoff week also with Vibe. So, Stay tuned uh, as we live broadcast that as well. All right, this is Matt with Bite. We're here with Coach Greg Cranfield, St. Pius X. The Panthers are 2-2. Two and two. They're on a roll. They got Bishop done this week. It's going to be a good, good uh, challenge for them. We'll see how it goes. This is Matt with Bite. Go Panthers.